somewhat dismayed, or absolutely dismayed, um, <clears throat> on um, examining Schedule 2 and the amendment to the Employment Relations Act in relation to employment relations education leave. And um, I have to uh, probably admit, Mr Chair, I mean, I was on the Select Committee and this, this went past me, but this is a very, very... Uh, and Joe Goodhue should listen because this is a very, very important, important provision, important provision uh, for workers when it comes to having uh, an active and engaged workforce, uh, understanding their rights, understanding their rights. What's that noise over there? There's a bit of a noise going on over there. It'd be good if it just, you know, stopped really. Um, but, you know, this comes on top of, Mr Chair, uh, the sneaky cuts that this government made to employment relations education last year and last year's budget. They cut the contestable fund by 56%. Well, this is consistent Fif with that. Well, it is consistent with that. But it doesn't just... I mean, I know Wayne Mapp, you know, gets all excited when we start talking about workers' rights, but actually that fund also applies to uh, employers. And they were just as upset about that as were um, unions and uh, workers, uh, representatives and the CTU, because the um, employers use that fund also to educate uh, their, um, their members, their managers uh, and businesses about productive employment relationships. And hey, look, let's face it, Mr Chair, one of the problems we have in this country, and it's been well researched and well documented, is that we have a low quality of management. It's one of the issues that are standing in the way of increasing um, our productivity. Now, if they went to some of those union education leave courses, they might the learn something. Well, well, that's true. That's true. But now it's going to be even more difficult, but, but of course, the, the because want to go and pay that the workers get. no, no, that's true. And of course, what's going to happen is unions are going to have to top this pay up. This is going to be yet another compliance cost on unions who are trying to do the right thing, actually, who are trying to make sure that they are able to have engaged and informed and well-educated workers so that they don't have to be knocking on the door of an employer all the time and uh, saying, Look, we want to uh, talk to you about what's going on in your workplace. The whole idea about employment uh, relations, education leave, is that actually many of the issues can be solved in the workplace by those workplace representatives or delegates. Now, uh, Mr Chair, so I, I am disappointed about that, but I wanted to refer also to the transitional provision um, under Part 2, um, Clause 19, uh, where it refers to Section 28A um, of the Principal Act. And uh, that, I think this is just an illustration of the mess that this whole Act has got us into. Um, because, you know, we heard from the opposite side in the earlier debate is how people, you know, how workers just love this uh, ability to cash up their annual leave and can't wait, and they're so grateful to the government. Now, of course, this is not going to come into force until next year. In fact, when we get to the uh, commencement date, there's some confusion around that as well. It's not really going to come into force until next year. So uh, all sorts of people are out there that have been listening to the national government rhetoric and going, oh, well, at least I can get a pay increase by cashing up my annual leave uh, this year because I haven't had a pay increase any other way because this government's plan is, you know, has no plan to build the, the economy. Um, Yes, Sergeant Major. Yes, Sergeant Major. No plan to build the economy, no plan to increase wages, no plan to try and get, to bridge the gap with Australia. We all know that. But also, Mr Chair, in Schedule 1, the consequential amendments, what we have here is, I think, again, an illustration of the confusion of this Act. Because while we haven't talked an awful lot about average daily, daily pay versus uh, relevant daily pay, because overall we don't have major difficulties with with the change, what we, what we do have in this bill is a choice, an employer's choice between one or the other. Now, how confusing is that? We've heard again and again how difficult the Holidays Act is to interpret, it, to interpret how complicated relevant daily pay is to calculate and so on. Now we have a choice. And oh my goodness, and so all of those sections under Schedule 1 are going to be amended. And uh, I just think we're getting into a right old mess. You know, the Holidays Act, you know, we get, it gets criticised again and again, um, and this is supposed to be the opportunity for this government to show everybody in the country that they can do a better job than other than the Labor government. I think they've mucked it up. Actually, Mr Chair... Uh, Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair.